In this video, we're going to talk about vectors. We'll talk about what they are, and then we'll see how to add and subtract vectors. Now, in physics, we use two types of measurements. We have scalars and we have vectors. Scalars are a measurement that include only a magnitude, no direction, whereas vectors have a magnitude and a direction. We usually represent vectors with an arrow, and the size of the arrow is going to represent the magnitude of the vector. And so a small arrow would indicate a very small magnitude, like something like 5 kilometers per hour, and then a very large arrow would be a large magnitude. So this could be like 100 kilometers per hour. And then we also generally are going to use a Cartesian coordinate system. This is the xy axis that you see here. And so the angle of the vector will actually indicate the direction. And we have to use a reference point. Um, and usually the reference point is going to be this x-axis. So here from the zero point, this would be our angle. And then we could increase or decrease the angle and even go uh, to the, another quadrant here. And we'd always represent the angle based off of that zero point. We always have to have that reference point. Now with vectors, we have a, a couple parts of the vector here. We have the tail, which is down here, and then we have the head, or the tip of the vector. Let's take a look at how we can add vectors. So here we have two vectors. We have vector A and vector B, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to add them together. So you put a plus sign here, and the way we'd write this is we would just say vector A plus vector B is going to equal and uh, the answer, whenever we're adding vectors, the answer to vector addition, we're going to call it the resultant, and we represent that with an R. So when adding vectors, we're going to use simple geometry. And we place the vectors, we can actually take these vectors, and we'll place them tail to tip. So we'll take vector A, and we're going to add that to vector B. So we'll place them tail to tip, and then what we do is we connect the tail of the first vector to the tip of the, the final vector there. And so we'll connect that. And then this new vector is our resultant. That's vector r. And so we can simply measure the length of that vector. And then also we could uh, measure the angle here to find what the new angle is of that vector. One thing to note is that it really doesn't matter what order we add the vectors in. We could do a plus b, and that would be the same thing as doing b plus a. So what if we had more than two vectors? So if we're going to add any more than two, three, or four, or five, whatever it is, we just follow the same procedure. And we could take one vector, and then we simply put the next vector, uh, tail to tip and then the next vector, tail to tip, and then what we can do is then put in our resultant, and it'll work the same way. We'll take the tail of the first vector, and then we'll connect that to the head of our final vector, and so this vector right here that we ended up with, this would be our resultant vector. Okay, let's try subtracting vectors. So here's our vectors a and b again, and this time we're going to subtract them. And so we would have a minus b, and this is going to be the same thing as just saying a plus negative b. And so we're actually going to use this version to solve this problem. And whenever we're going to change the sign of a vector, all we have to do is take that vector, so here's vector b, and we're going to reverse its direction. So I'll take vector, vector b here, and I'm just going to switch it around. It's going to have the same magnitude, but now it's the negative of b. So here's my negative b, and I'll bring in my vector a, and we'll still do the same thing. We'll go the tail of our second vector to the tip of the uh, first vector there and then we'll connect them with the tail of the first we'll connect that to the tip of the second vector and so in this case this is our answer that's our resultant for a minus b it's going to equal that vector right there and finally we can actually 
multiply our vectors by a scalar. So let's try this one. Let's try a plus 2b and see what that comes out to. So here's our vector a. And if we want to do 2b, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the magnitude. So it's magnitude only, nothing to do with the direction by two times. We're actually going to end up with this new vector b, which is twice as big as the original vector b. And then we'll again go through the same procedure here of connecting the tail of the first vector to the uh, tip of our final vector. And so this is our answer, our resultant there for a plus 2b. And so that is a brief introduction to vectors.